Oh, hello. It's Monday, the 15th of January, and we are actually in Mexico. You can't really see, but we're in Mexico. <laughs> yes, hello. Welcome back to Richard Vlogs Disney. My name's Richard. I make Disney vlogs. Roberta is the other side of the camera. You can't see her right now. Hola. Um, <laughs> she is involved in Disney vlogs. Uh, welcome back to our Disney Fantasy Cruise. Welcome to day three. Um, you didn't really get involved or you weren't really around on day two because it was a sea day and I said at the end of my embarkation day vlog I would only record interesting things and really we spent the entire day sat outside Cove reading books on the promenade reading books and up by Satellite Falls reading books so <laughs> there was nothing very interesting the only thing that did happen that I will put some clips in of now is the first fireworks show of the cruise which is called celebrate the supers this is a Pixar day at sea sailing so they have the Incredibles themed fireworks so we can run some footage of that now <laughs> You know, we, we had dinner at Enchanted Garden. Uh, I've definitely shown that in earlier vlogs on The Dream, and it was the same menu. One other interesting thing did happen though, and some of the eagle-eyed amongst you may have spotted, you're in a different room. And we are in a different room. We have changed rooms. Um, we were on deck six, somewhere around midship. 6124 was our old stateroom number. And um, there was a noise. We, we kind of basically lined up in the ship where the rear funnel is and there was a like a resonance big word word of the day um basically like a humming noise throughout the entire night which was very loud and very annoying i can only liken it to liken it to being on a plane and trying to sleep and after one night there we were like nah this isn't it we went downstairs um, I just inquired and said, look, we're having trouble in our room. Is there any possibility of changing? Um, and they were so good about it. And I've always said that you can never can tell how good a company is until they have to fix a problem for you. And within 25 minutes, we were in a new room. It, it's, it's great. So we're, we're very happy of how they dealt with it. The room is based is the same category. It just doesn't have that fifth sleeper wall bed which doesn't matter because there's two of us. So it doesn't, we really don't need the, the five beds. The reason I think we didn't notice it n until we sailed is that the Disney ships have what they call ship to shore power, where they pull their power from the um, dock. Like they, they're provided power by their ports. And what that allows them to do is wind down their engine when they're in ports. Now one, that's better for the environment, but two, I think it just meant that we didn't notice that we were in a somewhat noisy section. Uh, it's hard to, to sort of say where that is, and I definitely have never had it on any other ship before, so I don't think it's necessarily something you should be worried about. I don't think anyone else has complained. I haven't seen people like changing rooms, dragging luggage around, so... Anyway, we have a shore excursion today. We have a port adventure. We are going to some Mayan ruins. We're going to eat some chocolate, and we are going to a beach. So we are going to go now to... Deck three forward to the Walt Disney Theatre to check in and let's go. We are checked in. We have our Pluto stickers and we now have to go and sit in the Pluto section with everyone else that's on our tour and wait, basically it's like 10 minutes. It's a nice chance to have a look at the Walt Disney Theatre. We don't really ever film in here because obviously shows can't be filmed. But it's a nice chance to have a look at the theatre. And we are off the ship. I always love being down here because you get a real scale of how massive these ships are. Some great views of the ship here in Cozumel. 
one of the probably one of the best views of the ship you get when you get off. Don't you just love coming to other countries to experience their culture? Welcome to Mexico. We have Starbucks and Hooters. So we are officially outside the port now in the town around here. Uh, we're following our tour guide who's taking us to our bus. Give you one ticket for person. A big favor, mis amigos. Children's and ten or more, they need ticket. Nine or less, they don't need a ticket. Okay, so I'm gonna pass your seat to bro. And welcome to the first stop of our tour, which is some Mayan ruins. So before we get into the actual ruins, we start in this little square area where we've got some shops and we can buy some Mexican gifts. There's also a snack bar and everything here. I can't remember if I actually explained the totality of the tour, like what exactly it is we're doing the whole time. But obviously, stop number one is Mayan ruins. Uh, this was the main reason that I wanted to do the tour was because um, we the last time I came to Cozumel, which was like 23 years ago, um, we did some Mayan ruins. We actually went over to the mainland because um, Cozumel itself is an island. The next stop after this is a chocolate factory, which is, um, you know, chocolate is a big thing in Mexico. Uh, we get to, you want the ticket? We get to try chocolate and um, see it get made and have it all explained to us. Then the final part is like a beach break, an hour or so on a local beach. Um, which is like the bit of the tour we're like least bothered about obviously we will go and have our nice beach break but really we're here for the the ruins and the chocolate well we are in the area that i can record we will have a look at these beautiful exhibits have some over here as well i think a lot of the port adventures that we saw when we were looking at things to do there were a few different things to do there was like some a lot of beach related stuff disney always offers like private tours in like jeeps and stuff which are really expensive there's a few different like types of tours you can do for me personally i always feel like when you come to somewhere new and this is our first time coming to mexico together and my first time for like a really long time so it may as well be my first time i really want to do something like cultural <laughs> uh I, i'm not that bothered about coming and seeing on another country's beach what I really want to do is come and, and see something about that particular country and uh, historical ruins I, I like. <laughs> um, I really want to go to Pompeii. I really want to go and see things like that. So while this is obviously not that, uh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing this. Anyway, we are going in now. As we were walking into the ruins, look at the size. I, I mean, it, it zoomed in so you can't quite tell. That is a massive iguana. <laughs> That's so cool. The persons that live in the sanctuary will be the families in their higher social status. Two colors that we can find it a lot in this one is at the bottom a turquoise color and on the wall a hands with a and we call it east, west, north and south. They have a very very accurate knowledge in the temples for sure, you need to make a process for that pigment. Why? Paint the walls and the Mayan time. In that one, the rocks they have that red pigment to look different in our Mayan time. Of course, the red color was very similar to the color in our blood. That in the and welcome to our second stop. You can like it smell the chocolate from here. There's also a very loud um, welcoming party. Okay. Obviously because of the limited filming that I could do at the Mayan ruins, I think this probably feels slightly disjointed. So uh, I will try my best to summarize what we've been. So we've been to the Mayan ruins. There was um, four or five different buildings that we got to see. Uh, and Paco, our tour guide, who has been absolutely excellent uh, was telling us as much as he could in a very limited time because as he said to talk about the proper history of the Mayans you would need many many hours which we don't have so he would give us um, as much of a brief uh, top overview as he could uh, the ruins are incredible I hope the videos did them justice uh, just I love going to historical places like that and just imagining the fact that 
you know, thousands of years ago, this was just like where someone lived or where people went around about their daily business. So incredible um, thing to look uh, look at. Sorry. And then the second part here is of course the is chocolate or cacao and the importance of that to the Mayan culture. The fact that it used to be currency, it was considered a very important thing to them uh, in terms of health and wealth and all of that. Uh, and now we're going to go in and try hopefully as much chocolate as possible and then also these guys look at them in these lands something was blooming something that later became a pillar of a culture at an economic level it was an exchange currency that held high value as you can see all of this tour like links together so the mayan ruins to start followed by sort of the uh, uh talking about like the mayan culture and chocolate and the connections between the two so it's not just a two random things like ruins and chocolate what that how does that mix that it is it is connected it's all about mayan culture still so we have the day of the dead display here i love this this is very cool so roberta has a roberta has a uh like taho like a corn tortilla basically with some like a salsa on it good so it's going to be made from like obviously fresh stuff from around here and there are lots of plants being grown here as you can see obviously all the plants and stuff being grown here um so everything is local and grown here obviously like mexican food is like incredibly popular everywhere in the world even at home but i feel like you know obviously we don't get very good mexican food especially in the uk um so it's it's incredible to come and get like natural like actual good Mexican food made with real Mexican ingredients. We have our first chocolate to taste. I'm not sure how if any of that was in focus, but anyway. Wow. <coughs> That's so different. I don't know how to explain those flavors. Very good, very different. Okay, let me show you the recipe. For this activity, you can take pictures, as many pictures as you want. In case that you have a question, amigos, be my guest. Mi casa es tu casa, and I'm ready. Are you ready? Yes. 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 Let's see, you see? I have to grind it for me. Remember, many years ago, Mayans didn't have any milk or sugar. They got many condiments and different plants. For those plants, they are three important ingredients. The first one is pepper. This is not spicy. Actually, it's a natural enhancer of a frontal sensation. Then we have cinnamon, uno y dos. Then we have anato or a chiote, and the question is, what is that? And I guess you feel familiar with the name paprika. The idea of this condiment is only the red color. The red color symbolizes vitality, life, connection to the Maya gods, and please them. But at the end, it doesn't affect the flavor or the aroma, just the color. Mayan women used to have this like a body lotion, and the women that were pregnant, they put that on their bellies for no stretch marks. You know the commercial name, cocoa butter. <laughs> and yeah. cacao is a good medicine. So a few years later, Spanish conquerors came to this continent, they tried chocolate, they didn't like it, it was bitter. They decided to add, by the first time, sugar. Then we add a little bit of the fresh, sweet, and delicious honey. I mean more, okay, more honey. <laughs> and then we add pure and dark vanilla. We need one and two spoons. Uno más, okay, one more. <laughs> and now I need only 10 seconds to show you how easy it is to make chocolate. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we got great Spanish chocolate, amigos. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> that was the same chocolate that you tried on the spoons. Crispy, yeah. crunchy, grainy, different sensation. Amigos, familia, I just want to say <coughs> gracias. Thank you very much. Keep in your vacation, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We open the doors. One, two, three. Open sesame. 
so we're having a look at chocolate flavors we've got some puffed rice and what's that almonds and hazelnuts mm. the other flavors i'm seeing that i'm pretty sure i'm going to want to try want yeah the banana and banana yes cardamom is going to be an interesting flavor so i definitely want to try some of that um and then if you know me at all you know i love me some mint dark chocolate so we'll start with the mint filling because i feel like that's an, an, an easy one that i know i'm gonna like it's great really good how, how are yours yeah, it's good i really like the white chocolate good like the mint filling it, wow there's like a spice to that chocolate as well okay now we go for the interesting flavor this is the banana and cardamom i don't know no it's not no i, I genuinely don't know I think the mint one, I think I maybe did them the wrong way around because the mint one was so intense that I'm not sure I really, I'm not sure I really tasted that all that much. Um, but I don't know, maybe I need to try again. <laughs> okay, round two. I'm going to bite a bit and Roberta wants to try some, so. I don't know, I don't taste anything. I think if I've tried it twice now and I still have no emotion about it, probably not the one that I will go for. No, I, just, ooh, I did just get some cardamom though, but I'm not sure I liked it. And then the final part of our excursion is the beach. Now you can just come to the beach. I think the beach is one of the like excursions you can buy. Uh, but like I said earlier, I'm not interested in coming and sitting on someone else's beach. Um, it's nice to go out and do some of the cultural stuff. And I'm really, I'm really glad we did what we did. So the excursion itself was $89 each. And would you agree? You like? Yeah, it was good. The tour guide was really good. Yeah, the tour guide was really good. Would you do it again? Like, not obviously, again. not again. But like, would you reckon? That's probably not the right question. Would you recommend it to people if someone was coming to Cozumel? Yeah. 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 I think we would definitely uh, recommend it to people to come and you know experience this stuff if you're coming to Cozumel and we are back at the port we are heading now back onto the ship uh, it's, we have about 45 minutes I think before like our standard all aboard time but we have not really anything else we want to do here so we're gonna get back on the ship and then get ready to watch us sail away towards Grand Cayman yeah I truly believe this might be one of the best ship views of any port we've been to yet get a really great view of the entire ship from here. So that was our day in Cozumel. We'll recap it in one moment. We'll just come back to our room, obviously we just got back on the ship, and we found on our bed this. A nice bottle and a card. The goal of Disney Cruise Line is to provide a magical adventure for each and every one of our guests. Please accept this small gift as a goodwill gesture. And this is so much more than was ever required for what was just a request to change rooms if there was one available. Um, again, 10 out of 10. They just, they smash it every time, don't they? So, so unnecessary. Anyway, our day in Cozumel, let's recap. I'm gonna come out onto the balcony, that's bright. Um, that there, that's the, mirroring. That there, that's the Norwegian escape. That was with us in Port Canaveral on our embarkation day uh, and just followed us to, um, or maybe we followed them to Cozumel and now we are both going to um, Grand Cayman tomorrow. Anyway, day in Cozumel. If you've watched our vlogs regularly, our cruise vlogs, and I think this is my fourth cruise series. Others are available, browse the channel now. Um, very rarely do we do port adventures. In fact, I think this is the first port adventure that I've ever vlogged. And so this is the first time that I have ever vlogged a Port adventure and I'm so I'm gonna sort of give it a pro and a cons the first pro obviously is that you learn about things it's more interactive you have a guide they're gonna tell you things things that you probably wouldn't know unless you googled and that takes time uh, so it's nice to have something like planned out for you um, the, the tour was very well put together it took us to some wonderful places so that's a very big pro the other pro in I think in this instance was that there wasn't much else that we wanted to do in Cozumel so it might mean that like rather than you maybe just like getting off the ship wandering and getting back on you do more you explore more but actually that leads into one of my cons which is that you lose your freedom 
So you lose your ability to get back on the ship when you want. Uh, maybe, so for us, for example, we would have like preferably skipped the beach hour and a half. Like there was, we 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 had no interest in sitting on a beach. We just sat there because it was what was on the tour. Uh, it would have been nice if we could have just got on a bus and come back to the ship. So you do lose your freedom for the day because you have to go by wherever the tour is taking you. So that's just something to consider. Overall, I really enjoyed our time in Cozumel. I really enjoyed our tour. I'm very glad that we did it. Uh, I'm very much looking forward now to going and probably falling asleep at Satellite Falls, but we are gonna head up uh, to deck because obviously we're getting ready to leave now and it's nice to be up there. Hopefully we'll get some horn action. Tonight is Frozen, which is probably the one show in the fleet that we have never seen. So we're really looking forward to seeing a new show uh, that's obviously opposite our dinner time. So that's in about an hour and a bit. So we're gonna go and sit upstairs for a little while, watch us sail away and then make our way to watch Frozen for the evening. We've come up to deck 11, 12, 13, <laughs> forward, uh, near Currents Bar for sailing away. Not sure how well the microphone's doing. It's a bit windy, so apologies if there's any kind of wind noise. Um, probably we'll also have to remove it soon because I assume they will sound the horns and it makes my microphone want to hurt itself. Um, though that it, was, it might not be as bad on the fantasy and the dream the last time I caught the horns on my microphone was the wish and if you know they have much stronger horns anyway they just sounded the chimes I think we we're about to leave so the chime was Captain Fabian telling us all about our journey to Grand Cayman so we have about 320 miles to go to get to Grand Cayman which is actually kind of far to get in a single night so we are going to be going basically as fast as the ship can maintain a speed of 20.8 knots uh, we're going to arrive there tomorrow about 10 a.m., which is actually kind of late for an arrival into port, but it's just the distance between the two. Um, if you've been on some of the Bahamas cruises, especially the four nights out of Port Canaveral and Miami, they go very slowly because they really don't have to go particularly quickly to get those distances. So far, we have been powering basically since we left Port Canaveral, and I feel like it's going to be like that. As we jump from port to port, we're basically doing as far as we can get in a day. Anyway, uh, about five minutes, and we'll be on our way. It's an art getting the horns on camera, and that is an art that I have not mastered because I always miss, uh, miss it, missed, um, when you wish upon a star again but uh if you hadn't noticed we have left now so we're on our way uh, another thing that the captain did say is that because we're going to be going very quick and the wind is like blowing in a particular direction like against us the wind on the top deck is going to feel like really intense tonight so maybe not much like out <laughs> outdoor time uh on the disney fantasy tonight because 40 knot winds in the face not really yet this is actually the third Disney ship to be in Cozumel within two days, as uh, yesterday both the Magic and the Dream were here, uh, which is always great to see two ships in the same port on the same day. Honestly, sometimes I just look up on a cruise ship and I think, how can you not like cruising? I do understand that cruising isn't for everyone and I understand people have like fear of the ocean and. But if you think that cruising is boring, or if you think that cruising is just not for not for you, I really encourage you to consider giving it a go because cruising is great. It is theatre time, so we are heading in to find ourselves a spot. Seat secured, camera off. See you at the end. Does that replace Beauty and the Beast for me? It's close, you know, like, Beauty and the Beast is good, really good, it, uh, good is an understatement. That was also really good. Uh, the puppeteers, like the, the way they did certain things, it's a different style of show, like Beauty and the Beast is far more serious than that, but God, they're both so good. I don't know now. I guess it's just another reason to keep coming back on whatever show has, whatever ship has frozen. Roberta's gone back to our room. I've just come for a little 
walk around the promenade but I thought I'd sit and just chat for a little bit uh, just to again think about does Frozen replace Beauty and the Beast for me I don't think it does I think if I really sit and think about it Beauty and the Beast is still the best show in the fleet um, it's a much more serious in tone show the whole way through and we've been very lucky to see some incredible casts perform that show especially like in the role of Gaston but this crew, this cast is also like incredible the Duke of Weselton Weasel Town was so spot on so perfect um, Anna also so good for dinner tonight we are in Royal Court it's our first time in that restaurant on this cruise yesterday we were in Enchanted Garden um, it's the standard menu uh, or the the normal menu you would get on your first night because we get to uh, experience every restaurant at least twice you get an alternate menu which is quite nice it's nice to have lots of different things to, to try and you don't have to you know go back through the same menu again but it's a standard menu tonight which is actually my favorite menu on of the all of the fleet uh, Roberta's least favorite my favorite uh, so looking forward to dinner tonight other than that I don't really think that we've got much else planned uh, we've really been enjoying this cruise it's been so chill uh, everything that a three night cruise is not uh, so much time to just do kind of nothing which is everything we wanted it is dinner time I do really like this restaurant it's probably the least themed of all of them on the ship but there's just something really nice about it plus it smells incredible in here these Shirley temples were not ordered that's what we've drunk yeah they were summoned uh, this is what we've drunk for the last two nights so they bring it to us now as and that's the fact they remember and that they just bring you your drinks that they know you want is just another one of those reasons that we always come back because it's it's so simple isn't it but it's just the simple things make good service and we start in royal court as we often do on this menu with the deep fried brie i always struggle with this menu because there's two dishes I absolutely love. There is a lamb dish I love, but I have gone with the beef dish. This is the fillet. Uh, Roberta's gone for something a little bit different. She has a uh, lobster uh, and tomato pasta. And I am ending with the souffle. Roberta has the creme brulee, which is her favorite thing on this menu. So that was a great dinner in Royal Court. We are walking down now to after hours to, it's not called After Hours on the ship, but you know what I mean, to play Majority Rules, which is one of my favorite game shows. But I just wanted to show this nice scene in the atrium. We got some character meet and greets going and some really nice music. Cinderella is down here. Goofy is over in the little vestibule over there. Did I just use the word vestibule in a, in a friend's reference? Yes. <laughs> of course of course on the fantasy it's called Europa not after hours but you know know what I mean so we are here for majority rules um, <laughs> if you're wondering about the light the menu in here lights up uh, anyway uh, it's good stage lighting right it works majority rules is a great game basically every there's a bunch of teams you can be a team on your own or with another person Obviously we will be a team together. Uh, what happens is they ask a question and every team submits an answer. And whichever answer has the majority, so the question could be, what is the best Disney World snack? And if five teams say pretzel and one team says popcorn, pretzel wins the points. So, and then obviously points at the end equal winning. Um, probably not prizes, because it's very rarely prizes for the adult game shows, but uh, it's just good fun. This it's like a straight jacket on you. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I can do the back flips that I used to do in this. <laughs> Take it off, the <laughs> what? It ain't that type of show. <laughs> <laughs> the best place for a honeymoon. Easy. So right now, the best, the best place to go for a honeymoon. All right, let me read it out. So the ones that didn't make the cut. There we go. Universal Studios! Yeah. <laughs> of course that's the unpopular one. Go over there. The Disney Cruise Line didn't make the cut. <laughs> Anyone here on the honeymoon right now? 
All right. So you must be the ones that wrote that down. All right. And the majority that gets the first point is Hawaii. A job you wouldn't tell your mama about. Where's Team Sink or Swim? Yeah. You're right. Mama will have no idea what I do. All right. So that didn't make the cut. Disney Cruise Line Entertainment. <laughs> Cruise ship game show host. <laughs> Exotic dancer did make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> and the majority wrote down stripper. Yeah. You don't get the point. <laughs> Write down your team name and a celebrity I most resemble. <laughs> Mr. Worldwide, The Rock. Are oh, you guys? Are you guys are too kind? I did some push-ups this morning. Justin Bieber. <laughs> I see it. Cleveland from Family Guy. <laughs> <laughs> and the winners of Majority Rules goes to the Cool Cats. Where you at? We came back to our room to a freaking bat. I love Halloween. It's freaking bats. And anyway, that was also Majority Rules, which you saw. Great fun. The host, Yo Yo, is hilarious. Um, and obviously, the better the host, the funnier it is. And he is particularly funny. We did also sit and watch Match Your Mate for a while, which is like the one of the other adult game shows where they pull a couple, so like three couples up on stage and get them to um, sort of answer questions about each other when the other one isn't in the room. The problem is I get really bad cringe, so I can't sit and watch for too long because uh, I just get really bad secondhand <laughs> embarrassment, even though it's nothing to do with me. <laughs> um, that's kind of it, I guess, for this one. Um, we had a really good day. Uh, Cozumel was great. Really enjoyed our uh, port adventure. Uh, we are in Grand Cayman tomorrow. Um, we, it's a later arrival for the ship. The ship doesn't actually get to Grand Cayman until 10 a.m. Our plan is to uh, wait for the rush, wait for, wait for everyone to get off, maybe have a nice lunch on board, and then go out into that. But you will see that next week in the vlog when that comes out. Uh, thank you for watching this vlog though. If you have enjoyed it, please click that like button because it helps us out very, very much. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you have enjoyed it as well so you get uh, notified of everything else that comes out in this series. Maybe go back and watch some older ones. Leave a comment, say hello. I love talking about Disney to people. And yeah, that's it. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.